Hi everyone, Dylan from Eurospares here. Now, over the last couple of months, I've been noticing something and it keeps on coming up, which is that all the people I know who have been fortunate enough to own a lot of Ferraris will regularly name the Pista as their all-time favorite, one of their favorites, the one they'll never sell, the one that got away, but it keeps on coming up. So today I'm lucky enough to be taking out the Eurospares Pista for a blast. And together we're gonna to try and understand what it is about the Pista that makes people hold it in such high regard. <laughs> God, this thing's good. So alongside the Dino Evo that we ordered in the last video, there's a couple of cool cars in the Eurospez fleet. The first is a Pura Sangue. We've also got a 348. We've got an 812 GTS. And then we've also got this Pista. And this Pista was the one that I was most excited about driving. Now, I was a little bit nervous because I was told in no uncertain terms that if the car came back looking like the yellow one that we'd broken for parts a couple of months ago, which we still have loads of bits left over from, by the way, that I should leave the country before I called my boss to let him know that I had uh, crashed his car. But that's not gonna happen today. So, how am I feeling? Well, initially I was pretty nervous, I'll be honest with you. But as I've become acquainted with the car, it's actually really, really inviting. I mean, look, I'm not pushing it by any stretch of the imagination, but you don't need to to have fun. And that's the mark of a special car. The one thing I do need to say is that this car is fitted with a Klein exhaust. So we've got decats, rear silencer. I think maybe if it had the stock exhaust, I wouldn't feel quite the same way, but I don't need to wring this thing's neck to have fun. So just quickly, it's not only Tubi that we offer. We do actually also offer Klein. So if you want your Pista to sound like this, get in touch. In terms of the dynamics of the car, I mean, look, it's incredible. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. I mean, listen to this. <laughs> the other thing is the brakes are unbelievable, <laughs> but they're so easy to modulate, right? And that's the thing is, as I said, this car is dramatic at any speed. It does everything with such a plomb that you don't need to be a Wally to have fun. <laughs> So my understanding of speed comes from riding sport bikes, particularly 1000cc stuff. And people will know that feeling that a fully lit 1000cc sport bike gives you. It's just face melting. <laughs> you get that drop in your stomach. You get that warp speed. It's like lighting up the Millennium Falcon. And there's very few road cars that give you that feeling. It's quite an easy feeling to emulate when you're in the passenger seat, but everything feels fast from the passenger seat. There's very few cars that give you that from behind the steering wheel. This does it. It really does do it. I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, first of all, it is well beyond my capability. So I probably haven't gone past three or four tenths, but it is still the most impressive car I have ever driven. But you're not here for a review because I'm not Chris Harris and I don't pretend to be. What I am gonna do is discuss it in the context of where it sits in the Ferrari brand and the lineup and what does it mean? And why do people love it so much? So I think the next thing to discuss is what do people generally agree on about this car? Well, I don't think it's a stretch to say that most people think that this is one of the most beautiful modern Ferraris. In fact, it may be the most beautiful. And what I'd offer you is this. I think of all of the non Pininfarina Manzoni era Ferraris, this is the least divisive. This is the one that everybody's kind of got together and agreed looks stunning. However, the interior is a bit dated. It still feels special, but it is quite dated. I mean, we first saw this introduced with what, the 458 Italia in like 2009, 10. So it's getting on a bit. 
But again, you don't buy the car for the interior. You buy it for how it makes you feel. And this car makes you feel incredible. And the next thing to say is, it's too fast for the road. It's, there's, there's no question. It is simply too fast for the road. But the counterpoint that I would put forth is, this car is literally called the 488 Pista. It's the 488 Track. It's not designed to be a road car. There are better road cars. It's designed to be a track weapon and it's designed to be fun. And it does that extraordinarily well. Now the lens that I wanna look at the Pista through in this video is through the lens of the cars that succeeded it and preceded it. Now, the first one that we have to speak about is obviously the Speciale. But anecdotally, it seems to me that people actually drive their Pistas much more so than they do their Speciales. If you go to any cars and coffee, car meet, car show, whatever it is, there will be a bunch of pieces. There may be a few speciales, but they're not as common is not the right word, but it's, it's not about the commonality. It's about the fact that people actually use them. I think the speciale has fallen foul of the, oh, it's an investment kind of thing. And fine, but they're also designed to be driven. We could all play a game about how many were built. And, you know, back of the napkin math suggests that there's three and a half thousand ish pistas and kind of 1500 to 2000 speciales but again that's just a guess however i can offer you some empirical data which is there is a fantastic website called how many left and what how many left does is it basically goes through the dvla which is the english licensing authorities databases and it compiles the amount of a model of car which are registered in the uk and if we look at how many left right now, there are currently, in 2024, registered on the road in the UK, 315 pistas. And there are 170 speciales. So there really is a demonstrable gulf between the numbers of these cars on the road. But if we go and we have a look at the number of cars that are for sale in the UK at the moment, that's where things become interesting. There are currently 21 speciales for sale in the UK coupes particularly and there are 18 pistas and that would suggest to me that despite the speciale being rarer the pista is the car that people actually hang on to and they want to keep and they want to drive now the one major accusation that gets leveled against the pista and is kind of the crown jewel of the speciale is the fact that the speciale is naturally aspirated but people seem to forget always that there is a really central tenet of Ferrari's history, which is turbocharged. In fact, introduce me to somebody that says the F40 was ruined by turbochargers, and I will show you a liar. Now the next car I think that we need to pull alongside the Pista and discuss is the F8. And the F8 is quite an interesting prospect because for all intents and purposes, it is the very same car. But owners of F8s and Pistas will know that that's not true. The reason I say that is this. While they do have the same engine and they put out the same power, the engine in the Pista is the ultimate version of it. And that engine in that car is one of the winningest engines of all time. I forget how many times it won engine of the year, but it was a lot. And the F8's version of it is the first mid-engine V8 Ferrari to be fitted with GPFs, and therefore it is a fundamentally compromised version of the same engine. Now, the counterpoint for the F8 is that it's not supposed to do the same thing, and it doesn't claim to, but what's interesting is that you'll often hear people say that the F8 does certain things better than the Pista, but I've never heard anybody say that the F8 is better than the Pista outright. So why do people love the Pista so much? Well, it's not the last ICE Ferrari, but it is better than the one that came before it, and it is better than the one that came after it. It's rare enough to be impressive, but it's ubiquitous enough to be used. Its performance is both fearsome and inviting. The point being, it strikes a balance in a way that very few Ferraris have ever managed to. 
and I genuinely believe that it represents a high watermark for the Ferrari brand as a whole. I'm going to say something which is intentionally designed to ruffle some feathers, but I genuinely believe it to be true. And that is, I think that we can already talk about the Pista as being a modern classic. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.